What's up, amigos? Before, about two or three weeks ago, we were looking at some crabs and creating downforce on them and looking at their legs and how they change the flow. So that got me thinking, how do other eight-legged or six-legged or ten-legged, I don't actually know how many legs crabs have, but for example, a scorpion, how many legs this one has, eight legs, how aerodynamic is this scorpion? It also has a tail with a stinger on top and pincers. So we have these X-planes going down, and it's really cool. The X-planes take on like pretty much the exact shape of the scorpion going downstream. You have the like little part coming up, coming from the uh, stinger, and then the legs you can see like curling down into the wake as well. The wake is somewhat steady. It's significantly steadier than I would expect, considering that it is quite a bluff body still. However, the legs are quite small, so they're not going to have a lot of uh, large-scale structures coming off of them. This indicates that it's a little bit more streamlined than what I first expected because it is more steady. Now we have a Y plane cutting halfway through the scorpion. And one thing that's really cool is the stinger itself has a wake. And you can see, like in the little tail part where it curls around, there's a massive wake zone just in there. And then the tail itself makes a big wake as well. Interestingly, underneath the scorpion, you can see that the flow pretty much separates from the very front of the scorpion and this creates quite a big wake. The wake is fairly steady there is some fluctuation up and down of like the flow coming off of the scorpion but it's not too bad i can also tell you that we can see actually from this wake that it's a little bit of an up angle and that actually indicates that there is a little bit of downforce and there is a little bit of downforce the lift coefficient of this was minus 0 0.036 so it's not much but it is a little bit um, there might be some lifts being produced from other sections which cancel out a bit more of that downforce so that's why we have such a small downforce but this scorpion actually naturally produces downforce and the crab that we're looking at before remember how we tried to make this crab produce more downforce artificially this scorpion is already well ahead based on evolution so mother nature obviously thought that scorpions have to go around corners faster so i need to make these scorpions better for this situation and here we go so we have a y plane just on the edge of the scorpion now it goes all through the four or five legs on one side or the four legs and then the pincer on the right side as well and interestingly, the wake from this section is actually not that bad considering if you look up a little bit, you can see this massive wake, which that actually comes from the scorpion's tail. So the tail, which is not that big, is producing just as big a wake as the four legs plus the pincer. So this is probably because these legs and pincer are all in a row. So they're not, um, they don't have a great frontal area, which reduces the wake size. So we have a plane now on the very edge of the leg. So it's just pretty much the feet and a little bit of the pincer. And the wake is almost as big as the wake when we're around over the legs and pincer. So even though we are, you know, we have a very small frontal area now, this area is just very wakey. So those, these feet are not very aerodynamic. Now we have a Z plane about halfway through the scorpion. So it's going through the, all the legs, the pincers and the middle of the body. None of the tail is included in this um, plane here. But we can see there is a, a little bit of a wake. It's actually very impressive considering it um, is not that um, blue. When we go like even one scorpion length downstream, it turns quite red and the wake does die out quite quickly. So that's fairly aerodynamic here. I can say though that the entire scorpion has a drag coefficient of 0 0.81. So that's very high, even though this plane doesn't show a lot of drag. We saw other planes, for example, around the legs and the tail that had a lot more drag and we'll see some more planes soon. This plane is an example of that high drag. Again, we only are going through the tail, but look how big the wake is. It's massive. And there is a periodicity to it. There's like um, pretty much a coherent shedding, it seems, from the tail, which makes sense. But that's a major wake for such a small structure. That's where a lot of the drag comes from. Now we have another plane a little bit higher, the Z plane, and this goes through the stinger and the tail. And again, you can just see this is even an even bigger wake, especially considering that the cross-sectional area is not that large. So the tail is really producing a lot more of the drag than the rest of the body, which is quite surprising. So that's in the simulation. Make sure to like, subscribe. And if you want to get better at CFD yourself, check out our courses in the link description. And if you want to get better at theory, check out those links in the description as well. And if you want to make your experiments 2 to 4% more accurate and your CFD validation data more accurate by that much as well, check out the MSU Hawk. It's an instrument we make. Link in the description. And I'll see you in the next simulation. Peace out, amigos.